Hi, I'm Daryl Cronzi, and the guy beside me, his name's Matt Gige. Now, what do you call this place we're fishing? We're, we're at Spring Island. Okay, and what's the name of this sound? Cayuca Sound. And what's the name of your lodge? Well, we call it fishingcayuca.com. I'll tell you what, this guy's one of the best, if not the best guide in British Columbia, and stick with us, because we're going fishing. Is that a honey? That's a beauty, Daryl. <laughs> put him down and get okay. to hurt you. <laughs> I'm going fishing all the time, and my baby's going fishing too. Bet your life that your sweet wife can catch more fish than you. And a fish will bite if you got the right bait. Now here's a little something that I'd like to relate with my pole and my line. I'm going fishing, yes I'm going fishing, my baby's going fishing too. Going Fishing with Daryl Cronzi is brought to you in part by Yamaha, reliability with every turn of the key. G3 Boats, a Yamaha boat company. Abu Garcia, for life. Berkeley, catch more fish. And by Daryl Cronzi's Canadian Fisherman's Breading and Batter Mix. Closed captioning for Going Fishing is brought to you by Skeet Soap. If you and your family are concerned about DEET, use Skeet. It's one of Cronzi's all-time favorite places to fish, Cayucat Sound on the northwest coast of beautiful Vancouver Island, where the scenery is breathtakingly beautiful. Luckily, there are some places in the world that are still untouched and largely inaccessible, and that's exactly the case when it comes to Cayucat Sound. It's an enjoyable four-hour drive up the coast and over the island's majestic mountains from Campbell River to Fair Harbor. Besides the natural beauty, it's the fishing that really brings Cronzi back to Cayucat year after year. 10 to 12 miles out from the lodge is a stretch of the Pacific Ocean referred to as the 50 Fathom Edge, or better still, the Salmon Highway. Today, Cronzi has teamed up with Matt Gige, one of British Columbia's best fishing guides. Matt and his partner, Christy Bostrom, have invited Cronzi to return to Cayucat and their Miss Charlie's Fishing Lodge. Stay with us and enjoy the finest salmon fishing on the Pacific. Matt, does this stop? Honest to God, we've been on five minutes. One coho, and this is not a coho, I'll tell you right no, now. No, you got a spring on there, Daryl. So I said to Matt, I want calm conditions. I want a quiet reel. You got an MR3 with a clicker that's on, on, on all the time, right? You like this out here? Oh, it's beautiful out here. It's great fishing. It keeps you really busy. This is a, this is a decent fish, let me yeah. tell you. Okay, so we're five miles offshore? Three. Three miles offshore? Yeah. Matt, what's a decent coho at this time of the year? Oh, eight to 10 pounds. Gee. Okay, when do they get real big? The end of August? End of August and through the first two weeks of September. Do you see many 15 to 20s? Yeah. Yeah, they'll be averaging 12 pounds at that time of they're year. Gain, they're gaining a pound a week right now. Apparently. That's not apparently, that's a gospel according to Cronzi. Is that? <laughs> <laughs> oh! Hey, you know what? You know what? That's a small chinook. Is it? It jumped like a coho, though. How that, big you figure? That's about a 10 or 12 pounder. Let her go or not? Well, let's keep it. Okay. Okay, so this fish may be going back to the river this year or maybe next year. No, this is uh, this will be a, this is a mature fish. Is it? Yeah. Ugh. Nice fish, man. Yeah, that's a beauty, Daryl. No. Look at that one. Is that a nice fish or is that yeah, a nice look, fish? Look at the colors on. You know, and they're still dropping their scales. Matt, I want to have a look at this fish. I don't want to ask you where that lure came from. Eh? Well, you sent me out a package of those <laughs> and I tried it out. Look at that one. That one's caught about 50 springs in the last couple of weeks. <laughs> it's a Dreamweaver fly from the Great Lakes. Yeah. I mean, there's no two ways about it. It's a miler fly, yeah, right? Yeah, it just lights up in the water. It's awesome. What's an average size here at Cayucan? Um, that's on, on the probably, you know, 20 pounds. I'd say that is average. You know? Yeah. Well, that one's 40. <laughs> <laughs> hey, that's, there, there's that's, a few that's of those 50, around. That's about 15 pounds. Yeah, that's 15, a real nice, 16. real nice quality fish. Now, the reason we're keeping this fish, I just want to explain something. We came out of Cayucat 15 minutes ago. Yeah. We got a coho right off the bat, Yeah. right? We got a spring like this, and you have to understand something. This area of Vancouver Island, is probably the best spot in British Columbia. You hear a lot about the Queen Charlottes, right? Yeah. But you guys are on the Salmon Highway, meaning 
you're getting all the fish going to the Columbia River, you're getting all the fish going to California, you're getting all the fish going to Fraser River too. Yeah, and then we also have our West Coast Vancouver Island stocks that show up later. What's a good day for Chinook? Anytime from May till September here. I'll tell you what, we're gonna play in these waves for a while. Yeah. Then we're gonna go into the calmer water. Yeah. But you have to understand, we've been out 20 minutes, we got a coho and a Chinook, and honestly, we could probably catch 30, 40 springs if you really have a great day. Oh yeah, you, well you, yeah, you, that, that's a lot, but you, you can... Uh... That's no fish story. <laughs> Here's a fish story, put him in the cooler for me. Okay, you got her. Nice fish. Yeah, it's a beauty. And now for the Daryl Cronzi's Canadian Fisherman's Breading and Batter Mix Campfire Comment. Dennis Best, you know what? It's the 10th of June, you know why? My wife's birthday's tomorrow. <laughs> I don't remember that one. I'm not going to even go north with well, you. I know it's the 10th of June because we're leaving on the 14th for uh, Ignis. So. You know, you and I were out in Georgian Bay the other day. Mm -hmm. And, you know, you mentioned, oh, oh, look out to your right. And there was, yeah. a, the, you know, the red pole with the flag. And it was a native or an Indian gillnet. And I'm just saying Indian because we've got the Indian Act. And I can use the word Indian. And I'm not a racist but a realist. Here we go again. But, yes, you saw the nets, right? And we know what gillnets do. Yeah, we've seen what can happen because... Uh whether we were supposed to or not, I have pulled the odd one up just to see what's in them, and there are salmon, rainbow, there could be lake trout, whatever. Gill nets are, are kill nets. Um, I'm all for commercial fishing. I knew an old guy, and, and God bless him, I saw him at the market the other day. His name was Terry Ross, and he was a conservation officer in the old days with the Ministry of Natural Resources. And he said to me, listen, here's our problem. And he was talking about sportsmen fishing during the spawning period, but he was talking about netters too, you know, netting off the spawning beds. He said, you know what's happening, Daryl? And I said, what? He says, we're killing the cow before we take the milk. You know what I, you know where he's yeah. coming from? Yeah, exactly. We're killing these yeah. fish before they get to the spawning beds. Exactly. I mean, I mean I'm, I'm for open water fishing, not on the spawning beds, not where you stock them. In Own Sound right now, we're stocking a million and a half fishmen in Georgian Bay. Where are we stocking three quarters of them? Right on top of the native nets. The natives say they don't want lake trout. Well, why in the hell are we stocking fish right on top of the nets? For three years, those fish swim through that net. Yeah. Right? The fish gets grocery store size, bang, he's caught in the nets. So are we raising fish just for the commercial fishery? No, at least we shouldn't be. Yes, we are. Are we closing off or a lot of the skein and a lot of the Fraser to stop these uh, spawning fish to get back up in the river? You're damn right we are. Well, and we got fish farms for that reason, right? I love fish farms. Yeah, so do I. We as long as they don't put the, that's another story, as long as they store, don't, yeah. you know, drop all their garbage on, on the other yeah. fish and on the bonnets, there's, exactly. there's a way to use fish farms and there's a way to commercial fish. And if we don't smarten up, we're going to lose the fishery. And if we lose the fishery, it's not going to come back. Is that enough said? Enough said. Put her there, buddy. Me and him are going to northern Ontario <laughs> for a whole week of arguing. <laughs> <laughs> going fishing returns with more salmon action from the waters of Cayucat Sound. Matt, I just can't believe the action here. You yeah. know what? It's a strong fish. Yeah, they just showed up to these ones. Well, what's got me? I like the shallower water than fishing. Oh, it's you know way that? more fun. They seem to have a lot more strength. I like to get more of these guys in the Great Lakes using their mooching reels. Oh, they're, they're so much more fun. You once, know, once you get used to fishing with those, you don't want to use a, uh, a mechanic. And again, drive. this really isn't a moocher. This is an oversized fly reel that yeah. I bring out here. Yeah, you, you should be fishing tarpon with that, Daryl. You know something? This guy doesn't want to come up. Yeah. Big fish, you have to understand something. We just lost one in here, what, 10 minutes ago? Yeah, yeah, it looks like the bite's coming on. We're coming up to the top of the flood here. One thing I got against you guys in BC is those barbless hooks. I know it's sport, <laughs> but one bad head shake and... Yeah, it can be a little frustrating. <sighs> Boy, he does not want to come up. Yeah, you get the odd halibut in here too, you know. You know what, I didn't feel that head shake. Yeah. We'll find out pretty quick. Well, I just went to check it and turned it on and then it popped off. So it's hard to get a good read on it. Now, how often will you see halibut in here? Oh, actually, you know, fairly regularly. You now, you can't believe this. We're five minutes from your lodge. Yeah. And I got to say something. This guy just opened this lodge this year, eh? Or was it last year? No, this is our first year. I've been guiding on the coast for the last 20 years and finally decided to go out on my own. You know what? We just may have a hell of it. I out think here. we got a right. hell of it, yeah. That's a bonus well, when you're getting one of those in here. We'll laugh, we see a great big Chinook tail, though, I'll tell you. He's not moving much. Yeah, usually the halibut you get in here are nice ones, too. They're not overly big. Yeah. Maybe like a, a 30, real, real good eating size. Well, we could be a while trying to get yeah. this guy up off bottom. You got a lot of lingcod here, too? 
Oh, yeah. Yeah, generally, you know, for the productive spots, we go, go about 10 miles out. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I think we got a hell of it, my friend. It'd be interesting to see just what's here. Yeah, it seems like we're, we're hooking up something every pass. We've had a coho, big spring up on the surface. We now lost the, the one spring, right? Right to the boat? Yeah, right. Yeah, it's too bad. They didn't really lose it. The hook just fell out of them. Okay, I'm gonna swing this downrigger in. Okay. You know, and you, you can tell what's happening by what the flasher's doing when it comes up. When that flasher comes up standing up like this, yeah. it's gonna be a uh, generally a halibut or a lingcod. If it pops up, it starts going off to the side. It's a- uh, Salmon. Yeah. But the funny part is the way this guy took that rod at yeah, first. Yeah, I, eh? I better get the gaff. Yeah. Okay, this, you, gonna, you gotta stand back yeah, here. Yeah, no problem. Okay, stand back. Where did he gulp that beach? <laughs> Look at that. Whoa! <laughs> Look, watch him. Buddy, what do you figure? I'd say Close to 40? Yeah, probably around 40. Now yeah, listen, 40 pounds. we came up here for Chinook. I yeah. said to you, we'll catch halibut tomorrow. And this is what's here. There's coho, there's Chinook, there's lingcod. You got bass in here. Oh right? yeah, you get you got everything here. But I wasn't expecting to catch a forty-pound halibut on a. Oh, well, we're salmon fishing. Right? Yeah, it's a bonus when you get one yeah. like this. Isn't that nice? Yeah, and a perfect eating size too. It'll be beautiful fillets off this one. Give me one of these. Yeah, hey, good job. Thanks, buddy. Matt Gigay and his partner Christy Bostrom both have fishing in their blood. Matt comes from a line of ancestors famous for their sport fishing talents around Victoria, British Columbia. Christie's family have been commercial fishing around Cayucat for generations. It seems only reasonable that the duo would put their efforts together to form Cayucat Fishing Adventures and operate Miss Charlie's Lodge. The lodge, originally the Cayucat Commercial Fisherman's Co-op, was converted into a restaurant which for years was the only eating establishment in the region. Now it has been reborn as a comfy little one-of-a-kind sport fishing mecca. It can accommodate up to six visiting anglers at a time, and those anglers get to experience one of the best adventures in British Columbia. Besides world-class fishing, anglers can look forward to first-class American plan accommodations, which include newly renovated bedrooms, wireless internet, telephones, wraparound decks, and food that is always scrumptious and more than filling. Well, I don't know whether I got a coho, whether I got a... It's either a spring big here. coho or a spring. You know, that or he's gone. Here he's running you know, towards the boat. You know what that's on again? Yeah. That's on that flasher. Fl I thought I lost him there for a sec, but... Well, that wouldn't surprise still, me. You've got hardly anything left on that Dreamweaver fly that I gave you. Yeah. No, I tell you, I, you know, in the last month, I probably got 50 or 60 springs on that. I think I got a coho when he was running towards the boat. One minute I thought I lost him, look at... No, I think, it's a, I think it's a spring take a mine like that. Look at this. Yeah. When I get this fish into the boat, I want you to see this fly. It's got no miler left on it. Boy, he was running. Definitely a spring, you're saying, eh? Yeah, you know, I think we're on to something with those, uh, that Ontario. The miler flies? Yeah, that's... Not, it's just a Great Lakes fly. Don't give Ontario all oh, the Oh, okay. <laughs> I don't feel like, I know he's there, but like, we may have another coho here. No, I, that's not a coho. You don't think so? No. If it is, it's a 20-pound coho. And as long as that flasher's up, you're, yeah, the fish keep, is still keep there. Keep him coming. I'm he's gonna swimming grab... right towards us. Here comes the net. Where is he? Where okay, is he? he's going to take off here. It's a good one. Is it? Yeah. Okay. See him there? Yeah, you get ready. I'm ready. I'm you, backing you lead, up just you, a touch, eh? You lead him into me, we got I him. I lead him into you. Four-foot <laughs> waves, and you're saying, I lead him into you. Hey, reel, yeah, reel, reel I'm in. reeling, I'm reeling. Okay, Daryl, reel yep. down a little bit more and lift up. Oh, I can't reach him there. Hang on. I can't reach him there. You better. It's be a, able... it's a, it's a tubby one. You got him, Matt. I got him. You got him, buddy. All right. I want them to see this. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Look at that. Now, now. <laughs> that is a, that's a tie. -y. You think that's gonna go 30, 33? Yeah. yeah, probably 34, oh. 35. And I don't want to fall over in this boat. Yeah. But. Look at the size of this one. Uh. This is what Cayucat sport fishing is all about. Yeah. Is this beautiful? That's beautiful. That's as nice <laughs> as I got to put it down. I'm going to get a hernia. Okay. <laughs> nice I fish. And now for the 
Walker Deeper Diver Tip of the Week, taking your lures down and away. Chinook salmon are often delicate feeders. Always keep your hook sharp, even if they're new out of the package. Okay, what's your name again, sir? Matt Guiguet. French-Canadian. Not from Quebec. No? No. <laughs> Don't be smart, you're from British Columbia. Yeah. Okay, we'll leave it at that. Before we go any farther, <sighs> Berkeley Specialist Series Looching Run. Yeah. Right? F-89 Fenwick, and I call it a mooching reel, but it's actually a fly reel, right? Mm -hmm. It's pretty good, but they don't make them anymore. No, that's too bad. You know? Yeah, that's a nice reel. Okay. We take this ride. Same ride. Different reel. Yeah. The Islander. Yeah, those are made in Victoria. By a buddy of ours, Barry yeah. Stokes. Now, I would say right now, this guy is making the best fly reels, the best mooching reels, the best trolling reels. Right? Yeah. The, one, the thing is with the islanders, once you start using them, you can't really use anything else. Okay. You get spoiled. Let me ask... Super smooth bra drags. Let, let me ask you something else. What the heck is this? That's a hot, hot spot flasher. I said I didn't want to use a hot spot, but it's a BC <laughs> flasher and you, you guys bet. are in love with them, right? That's a BC classic. Okay. What the heck is this? I want to know what you did to this thing. You sent me a couple packs of those a uh, few Strong weeks before. Strong flies by yeah. Dreamweaver, right? Yeah. It didn't look like that when I sent it. I don't mind no. you putting the siwash on, you know, and, and it's yeah. pinch barbs and everything. What happened to all the miler? Well, uh, that's what they look like when they show up. And that, that was about 60 Chinook and probably released 100, over 100 coho on that fly. And I, and I said to you, let's put the fly back down, right? Yeah. The fish was 42 pounds. Yeah. When we got it in here on the scales, it was 42 pounds, yeah. along with the 44-pound halibut. Yeah. All on these things, right? Yeah, I know. They work great. Okay. That mylar just lights up in the water. But that's what it should look like before yeah, the salmon the take package. the chomp on yeah. it. But you got 60 fish on that fly. Yeah, at least. Okay, one other thing. I guess I can put my hat on. Yeah. Dreamweaver fishing team, right? Yeah. Right, the DW. I said to you, I want to use my spin doctors, right? We caught some fish on this. We caught a lot of coho on Yeah, it. we did. We didn't get the big Chinook. We got yeah. the, I think we got the, and I could be wrong, I think we got the 19-pounder on that. Yeah, we did. You know, I've got to say thank you, Matt. And again, if you people get the chance, get to British Columbia, but go to Cayucat Sound. Queen Charlotte's are nice. Millbank Sound's nice. I love Cayucat Sound. Great ride from Campbell River, right? Yeah, it's a three, three-hour drive in from Campbell River. Scenic. Beautiful. Lots of fun. Oh, that's great, Daryl. Thanks know, for coming. Honest to God, we've only been fishing for four hours. We got up this morning. The day's just starting. And I'm going to go back out fishing after lunch. Yeah. Again, thank you very much. Okay, thank you. You take care. Yeah. Going Fishing returns with the Napoleon Barbecue's Shore Lunch. Now, without a doubt, and I mean without a doubt, real quick, my all-time favorite method of cooking lake trout, rainbow trout, steelhead, chinook salmon, coho salmon, brown trout, whitefish. I even throw some bass in there sometimes to get you bass guys a little upset. Now, story first. 1970, I was at Manistee, Michigan. The salmon had just started coming back. It was the start of the salmon program, and I went to a thing called a salmon fish boil. I sat down at a table with a couple really great guys. As a matter of fact, more than a couple. One was Howard Tanner, the other one was John Scott. Now, both of these guys together started the Great Lakes Salmon Fishery. Now, what they were having was a Michigan fish boil. Now, this is a Scandinavian recipe. It was used on the commercial tugs. They'd catch the fish, throw the pot of water with a little bit of salt on the stove, clean their fish, and throw the fish into the salted water. Now here it is an easy way. I'm gonna give you the simple way. This is called a lacy aluminum fish kettle. And all it is is an aluminum water kettle, but it's got a basket that goes in it. You bring your water to a boil, you add potatoes, and you add onions. You pour, now this is important, you're bringing the water to a boil, you pour a cup of salt on top of the potatoes and the onions in the water. You're gonna see me do that. You cook for 20 minutes. After 20 minutes, you take your salmon or your steelhead fillets, you put them in the basket, and you put the basket in the water on top of the potatoes and the onions. But you add another cup of salt. So what you've got is two cups of salt. You cook it for another 15 minutes. You're looking at the fish, lifting it at the odd time, make sure that everything's copacetic. You bring out the fish, you lay the fish on a plate. You put the potatoes and the onions on the plate. This is really good, and don't worry about the cholesterol or the plugged veins or the plugged arteries, okay? 
You've got your fish, your potatoes, and your onions on the plate with coming out of the water with those two cups of salt, okay? Don't wash off the fish, just lay it on the plate with your potatoes and onions, and then you get a cup of melted butter, okay? And on each serving, you pour melted butter over the fish, the potatoes, and the onions. Again, it's a Michigan fish boil, and the thing is absolutely scrumptious. Now, remember, Daryl Cronzi's favorite fish meal. It's a Scandinavian fish boil. It's a Michigan steelheader fish boil. I had my first fish boil back in 1970, 1971, with some of the greatest guys and the most important guys on the Great Lakes salmon fishery. Since that time, I probably had a thousand fish boils. You saw me pour the butter on it. You gotta pour the butter on it. You gotta give the salt to it, but don't put salt on the plate. Just do it in the kettle. And I'll tell you what, it's called the poor man's lobster dinner. Mm. No calories, no cholesterol, keeps you thin, keeps you smart. And we'll see you next week because after I eat this, I'm going fishing. For more information on today's fishing location and other going fishing destinations, visit goingfishingtv.com. Going Fishing with Daryl Cronzi has been brought to you in part by Yamaha, reliability with every turn of the key. G3 Boats, a Yamaha boat company. Abu Garcia, for life. Berkeley, catch more fish. And by Daryl Cronzi's Canadian Fisherman's Breading and Batter Mix. Going, Going Fishing would like to thank the following fine sponsors. Going Fishing, baby smiling my